Okay, we'll begin with the most important items, the bicycle repair stuff. Four, count them, four spare tubes, bicycle pump tested to make sure it works. Um, Multi-tool um, bike wrench thing, but also with a chain breaker and instructions on how to use the chain breaker. Spoke adjustment, cleaning brush, Three, count them, three patch repair kits, just in case. Uh, the things that you use to take the tires off, and some tape. And I've also got somewhere around here some spare spokes. And all of these, all of this, is going to go in deep in the heart of this frame bag. Or frame bag, uh, this uh, seat bag. Next, clothing. Oh. There's, uh, in there's underwear and socks, and my pajama shirt, and my pajama pants, and that's what I'll carry with me. I'll most likely be wearing this shirt, this, uh, I don't know what you call it, long sleeve warmer shirt, uh, these sweatpants, and these biking shorts, which are padded for my comfort. And that's the clothing I'm taking with me. Um, I'll be wearing different clothing on the ferry, but I'll be ditching that clothing in a cache on the island rather than carry it around with me. And so this is the clothing that I'll take. You might think pajamas are extravagant, but look at what else I have. I want pajamas in the evening. I forgot to mention my buff slash bandana. Blue Jays cap and the jacket I'm wearing uh, which is a Columbia rain jacket very important I've also got stashed around here somewhere a Z-Pax zip poncho which will also par form part of my clothing next up food this is 10 days worth of food for a very large man um, you have to keep in mind, this is Anticosti Island. There's no shops. There's no people. I can't just pick something up if I need it or I want it. So anyhow, here's the plan. I've got 10 freeze-dried meals. These will be my main meals of the day. Got them from uh, Mountain Air and Mountain House after careful review and testing. Uh, Two beef chorizos, or sorry, uh, salami, dry salami, that should last pretty well, I might get a third. Jar of peanut butter, oh, more of the alpine air. 20 instant oatmeal, 20 Cliffs bars, and granola. So. What I've discovered today, well yesterday actually, is that I can cook the uh, oatmeal and the granola together. It makes a delicious treat and I was just planning to have dry granola but now I realize that would be stupid. So I'm going to actually do that um, and maybe uh, mix in the oatmeal with that as well. I hadn't thought of that. but uh, And so that should be really good for fiber and nutrition. Um, the uh, meals will give me the protein I need and these things are good for snacking. They're really filling. I've used them before. Oh, lovely. Oh, okay, they're done. So all of that's going into one of my frame bags. Or frame bag. I keep using that word without knowing what it means. Sorry, pannier. And yeah, not pannier. Pannier. And this is going to go on the back of the bike right here it's sort of hard to see but there it goes you'll see it when it's all assembled it's health stuff and it's going to go in its own ziploc bag lots of anti-chafe some uh advils a benadryl for itch stopping polysporin soap um sunscreen bandages tape, gauze pressure, Sensodyne toothpaste, and afterbite for itch. Also my meds and uh, great outdoors, uh, 
anti-insect repellent. You might ask, meds? Well, yeah, I'm 63. I need meds. This is my ditty bag. Kind of odds and ends, daily upkeep. Uh, so my spork goes in here. This is a camp towel, microfiber. Spare earbuds. More painkillers, sanitizer, soap, toothbrush, toothpaste, floss. This is my water kit. Um, so basically I put dirty water in here, run it through this platypus filter and clean water comes out the other end. And yes, I've tested it. So this is stuff I use on a day-to-day -day basis. I keep it right up on top. Okay, so here's my pannier. It's the food is all in the bottom there. My nighttime clothes and I'll take my health kit and my ditty bag and some toilet paper put it all right up on top and then pack it up this pannier is ready to go actually waterproof like this but I am going to get some plastic bags in Ramuski to hold the clothes in okay for cooking I'm using this little rocket stove, although I don't think that's the brand name of it. And it just screws on top of these um, isobutane fuel canisters. I'm bringing two canisters, and you might think, why would you bring two canisters? Ten days, no people, <laughs> that's why. I don't want to be without my food canisters. So it's a little simple cook kit, right? This is my main pot, and I have a little pot holder. See, it just lifts up and down, pretty handy. My cup, which I don't like very much because I haven't washed it and I might replace it. Um, and then my coffee. I have a lifetime supply of coffee here. A mix of light roast and dark roast and that just rolls into that cup. Let me show you. And that works really well. It's a nice container for the coffee. And now for the rest of it, the holder and the stove collapses. I'm going to put that in. Put another that around. That in. It collapses weird, which I don't like, but there you go. And then uh, in the cup, like so. Put the lid on top. And. Here's a little mesh thingy, and we'll just wrap it up over the top. I know, terrible video, sorry. But I can't do everything, I don't have a tripod. And you just pull it down. And so that's my cook kit. So four items. Just as a note, I thought, and I actually tried these coffee with cream and decided against them. Um, they take up a lot of space and the cream kind of tastes off. So I don't know if it's age or what, but anyhow, that's my cook kit. And all of that's going to go into the frame bag in the front and then around it, I will stuff some of my cliff bars and uh, other things that I might need on a day-to-day you know, as I'm cycling my bag again. That's a handlebar roll bag. It's not, not the one up the top. So that's it. This is the tent. As you can see, it's up from when I was using it yesterday. Here's the fly. I've been airing it out because it gets condensation during the night. That's a stake. So the fly is the first thing I'll deal with. So here's the fly. Here's the pannier it goes into and here's how I pack the fly. I just stuff it and cram it. And that's how this most of this stuff is going to work. Stuff and cram. Most of the stuff. Sleeping bag next. Sleeping bag. Little bag the sleeping bag is supposed to go into. You might think no way, right? It's like Doctor Who's TARDIS. It's bigger on the inside. And it's neat, the sleeping bag, it's really warm. And I think the way it works, when you uncompress it from the sack, 
basically the material inside expands and creates a whole layer of air insulation. There we go. Pull it shut. And there's a little clippy thing. And there we go. And into the pannier it goes. Now you already saw me cram the fly in there, you might think, how can there be room beside it? Well, there is. Because I'm just going to cram it in and make room. <laughs> so this is the Sea to Sky Air Mattress. Uh, is it good? Mm. Is it durable? Yeah. Um, so, does it empty quickly? Oh yeah. <laughs> So, this I do need to fold a bit. Now I know you fold it three ways. There we go, that's one way. Fold it the other way. There we go. And we'll roll it up from the end that does not have the little valve. And now this way, all of the air will be forced, forced towards the valve. But normally I'd do this lengthwise on the table, but bad video, first of all, and it's covered with stuff. So, let's roll. See, what you're supposed to notice is how quickly this tent packs up. And I guess you're not noticing it, but compared to other stuff I've had, this is really quick. Roll, roll, roll. Little air left. Okay. Now we'll seal it, seal it. And now it'll fit in the bag. <laughs> Fits in the bag, more or less. Caught on the, caught on the valve, pull it up. And then the inflator bag just fits in the other end, like this. The idea here is you never lose your inflator bag, unless you lose the cover, and I've come close to doing that, so, and you might think, how? But, yeah, anything you can lose, I can lose. And now that is all going to get stuffed into the stuff set. Again. All right, what do we got next? We have next is this pad and it just rolls up. You might think, why do I need a pad if I have that air mattress? And my answer is, pad without an air mattress, not good. Air mattress without pad, not good. Air mattress with pad, nice. And so that's why. Now there's little elastics that'll hold it there. I'll just take the tent down. <laughs> the top. So the tent. And we just unclip all the clippy things. I'm hoping you're getting good video from that. Can't really tell. Everything just folds up, you know, standard. 
So, holes are just set to the side. Now, pull out all the pegs. Peg. Peg. Look at this, I already bent one. Peg, out. And peg. Later, I'll count my pegs. Okay, first I'll take the tent. And... So I just take the tent, stuff it in the pannier, I take the ground sheet, stuff it in the pannier, and then I'll put the rest of the tent stuff on top. Okay, so here's my helmet cam. Pretty cool, huh? Put that in. Everything just stuffed into the sack. Tent repair kit, tape. Even some glue up on top in its own bag. And that's it for the tent pannier. It's done. I'm ready to go. Adding them. Eight pegs. They go in the little peg bag here. And I got my poles. They will go in the pole bag. It's a bit of a pain to put the poles in the pole bag. Uh, they're not perfectly straight, so they always want to fly off to one side. So, there we go. That's those. Make sure I have this slidey thing. And, and then the stakes. And that's my poles packed. And they will just attach to the frame of my bicycle somewhere. Using... Um, uh, using ties of some sort. Bungee cords. Alright. Next up is my CPAP. That stands for something like continuous air pressure something. I've got a ResMed Air Mini. And here it is. And upside down, but what are we going to do, right? And it works pretty well. Let me take the... Again, it's hard to do with one hand. Alright, so there it is itself. Here is the pipe for it. And then here is the face mask. I use a full face mask. Uh, I've tried the nasal masks and they don't really work for me. Here's the bag. It all goes in. So basically what I do is I take these three components. I put them in the bag. Here are... All the wires that um, that connect to the different things. So I'm not going to sort them all out. But what you should notice here is I've tied them together with string. There's three separate wires. It's really easy to lose one. And I did that last year. So now I tie them together. So if I lose one, I lose them all. <laughs> But, as you can see, the way it gets so tangled, it's pretty much impossible to lose them. And then these wires also go in that bag. Okay, the CPAP is battery operated, and this is one of the batteries. And one battery is basically good for one night. So you might be thinking, 10 batteries? Nah, that's too much. So I've worked it out so that I can recharge my batteries en route. Um, there's a uh, an Aubre, Auberge McDonald partway through the route, which is where I'll be recharging my batteries a couple of times. It's about halfway across the island, so that works out really well. So I got four batteries. One, two, three, four. Still quite a load. Let's unplug that. Still quite a load. But what I'm doing is put the batteries into a plastic bag because, yes, they must be kept dry. And then the nice dry batteries get put into, at last, my frame bag. This is my frame bag. And it's going to fit nicely in the frame of the bicycle. You see how it fits? And this is where you store your heaviest stuff. So my batteries go in my frame bag. Kind of like, like this. And 
and you see, and, and they do fit. And the frame bag even has some room left over, hard to believe. The batteries are here. There's a little room at the bottom here, which is where I'll stuff, I don't know, maybe a, maybe a cliff bar. <laughs> Um, and there's space up here, and this is where I put my rechargers, my battery banks, etc. I've got uh, two battery banks, uh, one of which seems to be missing at the moment. I'll have to look for that. And, uh, oh wait, it must be, no, it's not there. Well, it's here somewhere. Two uh, battery, you know, power banks and uh, a couple of chargers. Those go in here, and this, this is basically my power center. PAP comes with its own little charger. It takes, you know, the, the Air Mini, it takes 12 hours to recharge. I use the big charger and I've tested this and it takes two hours to recharge. This is the one you want. This comes off the, the regular uh, CPAP that I use, the regular ResMed CPAP. It's heavy, but the same weight as a battery, but definitely worth it. And it goes in the frame bag. These are my batteries or power banks I should say. They're each 20,000 milliamps. Why two? Because Anticosti Island, no backups. Here's my phone, a couple of chargers, um, and uh, so the batteries and the chargers go in a plastic bag and they go into the frame bag in the front part. Okay, I'm down to the last of it. Um, these are odds and ends that'll go wherever they fit. My wallet, of course, because they'll need to know who I am when they find me. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, this is my Garmin InReach Mini 2. Uh, this is a really important piece of equipment. This is the thing that I use if I get stuck or lost or whatever and there's an SOS button, I hit that SOS button and they will call for help. It's a satellite communicating device. I can also track my progress and uh, I can send messages, um, SMS messages to people and that way I'll be keeping in touch with Andrea. And I see it's only at 69% so it needs charging. I need to make sure it's charged before I actually hit the road. Um, as well, Earbuds, uh, wire, Bluetooth earbuds, because that's the way things go these days. Um, what else? Uh, extra gloves. Uh, those aren't biking gloves. I do have biking gloves uh, and a helmet, of course. But those are uh, photographer gloves, and if it gets cold, I'll wear those. Or if my other gloves get wet, whatever. Mask. This mask is called Checky. Um, also, this is my multi-tool. Um, it's all its pliers, it's a screwdriver, it's various things. It's a pretty good knife that is <laughs> super sharp. So you have to be careful with it. And uh, this will just clip on with a carabiner somewhere on the bike. Well, it doesn't fit in equally both ways. It should, but it doesn't. Looking to see what else I've got here. I've got a pair of rain pants I'll probably bring with me because I am expecting rain. Um, here's the telephoto lens for this camera. This camera is a Fujifilm X. T200, um, and uh, it's a uh, mirrorless camera, mirrorless DSLR. Got a fuzzy mic for it. Testing, testing. Um, I've also got my Nikon trusty D750, which I'll probably also take with me despite the weight. I did not bring the long zoom lens um, because that just is too much weight to handle. Uh, but I think I can handle the camera itself, and that'll be for the nice beauty shots in full frame. Ricolas, because I need lozenges with the CPAP. Some bicycle oil, which I probably won't take with me, or maybe I will. I haven't decided yet. Um, just for lubricant. And 
Here's my water container, which clips onto my rear bag. And um, also, I'll be bringing with me a couple of uh, big smart water bottles. Smart water, you just buy it in the store. You don't buy it for the water, although the water is good. You buy it for the bottle. Oh, also, my um, Sea to Summit tarp slash poncho. And I might use it as a tarp, or I'm, you know, if I get leaks in the tent, I d had to do some repairs, or I might use it as a poncho. And that's it. Uh, maybe some bungee cords. And that's my gear. And I'm basically packed now. Uh, I'll put the stuff, well, basically in the trunk of the car, because I have to do, uh, go to the ferry, set up the bike before I get onto the ferry, and then park the car and then ride the fully loaded bike to the ferry with an extra bag for ferry gear and then for my my cache that I'll hide somewhere on the island before I go. And that's it. That's all my gear. Looking forward to it.